been a little hiatus. Uh, there's been some, I've been sick uh, with a stress induced illness. Uh, I've also been dealing with some new responsibilities. I am a head coach for a basketball team now. Uh, but I'm still here to give you everything you need. Let's start with the obvious, the MLB. Uh, since last time I've talked to you guys, the Astros have won the World Series. Let's congratulate them. Uh, it's great to they put a lot of effort in this year, and they deserve the win. Uh, but the thing I really would like to get to is let's talk a little bit about basketball. So the big news today, if you haven't heard, Leangelo Ball and some fellow UCLA players were found shoplifting in China and are currently out on bail, but we don't know how long it's going to take the process to get going. Now, that's all I have for the college game currently, just because right now we're still doing some exhibition games. Let's talk about the NBA and how Kyrie Irving is destroying it. So, what I mean by destroying it, the Celtics are 9-2 and two right now, with Kyrie Irving leading the way. Uh, the second place team in the East is the Pistons, another surprise. At that right now at the six and four range, there's a big group. The Magic, the Raptors, the Knicks, the 76ers. All interesting that they're right there. The Pacers have done surprisingly well. The Cavs are probably the biggest question mark right now besides the Milwaukee Bucks. They're both the Cavs are five and six. The Bucks are four and six. The Bucks also just got rid of Greg Monroe. They traded for Eric Bledsoe, and that should help eventually. But what is going on with the Cavs? I think the mediocre, the mediocre, sorry, role players are catching up to them. The age is catching up to them, and just a lot of it's just not what you expect. Now, in the West side, you got your Rockets, the Warriors, both at eight and three, the T Wolves at seven and three, Memphis Spurs right there as always. The Blazers, Pelicans, right on the heels. The Clippers are a 500 team, just like the Lakers. Surprise, yes. Uh, and the Thunder are 4-6, and six, another team I'd like to talk about. Let's take a look real quick at the Lakers, though. So the big thing is, what is Lonzo Ball doing this year? So he's had his ups and his downs, and the biggest issue is he's just not scoring the ball very well. He's having some issues shooting uh, right now he's averaging 8.8 a game. However, the thing I really like about him is he's at 6.4 rebounds a game, 6.9 assists per game. And the reason why I really like that is he's an all-around player. Now, here's where it's going to hurt really bad. <laughs> I'm a stat guy, but you look at Lonzo Bell field goal percentages. He's at 29.9%. That hurts. His three-point shooting is 23.4%. And that's terrible, guys. Uh, I think it's just the shots he's choosing to take. He needs to probably get himself going more with some fast break opportunities. Some, uh, excuse me. Fast break opportunities. Uh, pure two-point shots. So I know the field goals usually incorporates the three-point shot. So... Just pure two-point shot is about 34.3, which is, eh, that's kind of what you were expecting. He needs to get better at shooting. doesn't necessarily mean his form. It's just necessarily just getting a rhythm, figuring it out, how he can incorporate himself in the game. i am personally been on a standpoint of he's getting the team going. He's doing what he needs to, and that's really all that matters. Uh, some other key notes, the 76ers being 6-4, and four, I mean, it's not surprising. After all the moves they made this offseason, uh, one of the big ones was, to me, J.J. Redick. I didn't think he would leave the Clippers. And he's also the third leading scorer behind Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, both guys who are supposed to be the future. And J.J.'s just doing what he needs to do. He's scoring as a shooter, and that's what he needs to do. He's hitting the shots he needs to. He's passing the ball at three assists, almost three and a half assists, just like Joel Embiid. 
Um, I, that's all he needs to do. <laughs> uh, Dario Zark has been doing good for the team. It's been kind of interesting looking at who's starting, who's not starting. It looks like they're trying to get a good mix and trying to figure out how the lineup needs to be. Uh, a team I also want to really talk about the Celtics. Now, obviously Kyrie's the man. 22 a game. Uh, Gordon Hayward, sadly, did not get to com continue to help the team this year. But Jason Tatum's balling out. Jalen Brown is balling out. Al Horford is doing what Al Horford needs to do. And Marcus Morris is doing really well. But the, that's only in two games played. So, I mean, the number's a little boosted. But you look at Jalen, Jason... Kyrie, Al, those four doing great right now. Now, with that group, you need a center. I think Aaron Baines has started seven games. Marcus Morris started a game. Marcus Smart has started a game. Daniel Thales, or Theis, started a game. Of course, Gordon Hayward started the one game. But you're looking at a... Athletic team, even without Gordon Hayward in there, they're a very, very athletic team, and they're going to be interesting to watch going forward. And I think Kyrie puts them over that Cavs threshold. Why? Because I think Kyrie was the reason why they didn't get over the Cavs before, and now that they have Kyrie, I think they will be able to. Now, some other things. Let's talk about there's been a lot of news both in college football and in the NFL. Let's start with college though. So the college football rankings once again this past week's the second time. Georgia, number one, Bama, number two. Notre Dame and Clemson round up the top four. What I don't like was what happened last week. Ohio State and Penn State both lost. Big Ten's looking at Wisconsin like, hey, you got to finish undefeated now. Miami has a big game this weekend against Notre Dame. Has to finish undefeated to be considered seriously. And the team, I think, not getting enough credit is Central Florida. Now, why wouldn't Central Florida get more credit? They're an American team. Well, that's the reason why. Uh, so some of the games you have... FIU, they destroyed. Maryland, they beat. Memphis, they beat. Cincinnati, Eastern Carolina, Navy, Austin P, SMU. And they have three more games. At UConn, or versus UConn at Temple versus South Florida. Uh, I mean, the only one I would be worried about is the South Florida one because it's a rivalry game in Temple because Temple always seems to be good. It'll be interesting, but... The Georgia Tech game, so important. They just happen to be, there's just no love for the out of conference or out of the big power conference teams. And I'm always a fan of giving those guys a chance. That's why I, I'm going to say here we need to go to an eight person playoff. Automatic qualifiers for the SEC, ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac 12. Get the American, get the if you get the champions, I think it feels right. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're going to have the Sun Belt guys get knocked out. You're going to get the Conference USA guys knocked out. I mean, these guys will probably get knocked out anyways. And that's probably why they don't want them there. But even if you expand it to eight in the sense of eight best teams, excuse me, with the eighth team at least being a non-Power 5, it makes sense. So it would be UCF this year. All great options still. All great all the time. Now, there's just so much going on. And I can go on and on and on about certain teams. The th biggest one is for Ohio State, I just don't quite understand the performance last week and getting dis just dismantled by <sighs> Iowa. Uh, Lane Kiffin's leading the 
American, or not the American, sorry, Conference USA. Yes, Conference USA with Florida Atlantic. Not a shocker, but at the same time, no one was expecting. But, oh, man, it just feels like I'm rushing, and I know I'm rushing, guys. Uh, there's a lot to get through, and I just don't feel like... I really would not, oh, not like to talk too in-depth with certain things just because I miss so much. And I'd like to get back on track. Still dealing with the stress-related illness, but, you know, it's all right. Uh, so let's talk about the NFL, guys. NFL. Great, great, great. So uh, talking about something I saw coming thanks to the great articles by Downtown Rams and their podcasts always very very informative the Rams are 6 and 2 now when i went over their article about how they would finish i thought you know 7 to 9 be realistic now looking at their opponents in the coming weeks week 10 they got Houston who lost their quarterback, so as long as you score, hey, it's over. Uh, Minnesota, the following week, it's at Minnesota. That might be an L just because Teddy Bridgewater got activated today while Sam Bradford's on the IR. Now, the Saints are going to be a little tough. Arizona's going to be a little tough. Philadelphia, Seattle, I mean, they have a rough second half. But... If they could survive, if any team can survive it, I think it's the Rams that will survive it because Houston's not going to put up much of a fight. San Francisco's not going to put up much of a fight. Right there's eight, and that's already better than the seven and nine I predicted. A little, I think that's what a downtown Rams predicted, and I think they can get a win at Arizona. I think they can get a win at Seattle too for payback. And right there's ten. I think the Rams are a team to watch this year. And they have been all year. And it's just great to see what they're doing. Now, let's see what else. Other surprises, of course, the Saints. Uh, why are the Saints a big surprise? Well, let's look at it. The Saints have been a big surprise just because they're 6-2. and two. They beat the Vikings. They beat the Patriots. Or they lost to the Vikings. They lost to the Patriots. And have won six straight. Now, they beat the Packers, which I think, no, I'm sorry, I'm trying to see, yes, that is a Brett Hundley-led Packers team, which has been terrible. The Bears were close and just made too many mistakes, but the Saints have been solid, and they're, in all honesty, due for a loss in looking at these Looking at this Bills game on Sunday, that could be the loss to right the ship and they start winning again. Uh, hey, I mean, they're doing what they need to do. They're playing well. They got rid of Adrian Peterson. I know I didn't mention that on this show, but it's going to be interesting again. And another team, the Pan Panthers. What? what a trade can do for a team. I mean, they did good for the first two games, lost to the Saints, won two games, lost to the Eagles, and then lost to the Bears, and then won two games. Now, with this pattern, they should lose three, which I doubt, and then win two games. <laughs> but the biggest thing for them was they traded Calvin Benjamin. Was it a smart move? Time will tell. Uh, I mean, their Super Bowl run they did without Kelvin Benjamin. He's been having weight issues. He's still their top leading receiver for the year. Now, after him is Devin Funches, who's supposed to pick that up. And he's really close to overcoming the yardage. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's been doing well. Curtis Samuels inserted in the starting lineup. 
it's going to be interesting how they move on. They're really fast and they're really good now. And with only the Saints in front of them, it'll be interesting what happens. Now, other teams, some more surprises before we go into some disappointments, even if it is for injuries. Jacksonville's not... You can say it's a surprise for Jacksonville, but it's only a surprise because you... Here's how their games have been. They beat the Texans. They lost huge to the Titans. They beat the Ravens. They lost by three to the Jets. They beat the Steelers. Lost to the Rams. Then they won two straight against the Colts and the Bengals. Now, eh, those two teams aren't very good this year. But if you look at their schedule, the Chargers will probably be a loss. Browns is a win. Cardinals is a, could be tough. Colts is probably going to be a win. The Seahawks is probably going to be a loss. Texans is going to be tough. 49ers is going to be a win. It's all a toss-up. And they're, I feel like, getting the benefit of playing in a weak division right now. And honestly, that's how it works sometimes. The Steelers are running away with their division. As expected, uh, the Ravens just ain't putting anything together. The Bills are right on the tails of the Patriots. The Dolphins are 4-4. Four four. The other big surprise, the Jets are 4-5. and five. The J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Now, what's crazy about this is they, won, they lost their first two games, as expected. Then they won three games against the Dolphins, Jaguars, and Browns. Okay. Lose three games to the Patriots, Dolphins, and Falcons. And then beat the Bills. Like, what is this team? This team is surprisingly good and surprisingly scary that they can beat a team if they really wanted to. And it's because of the mix of young and old. That's what's even more crazy. <laughs> but... And the team I'm very happy to see done well this year is the Chiefs. The reason why I'm happy is because they're explosive, they're exciting. Uh, yeah, they're six and three, but they play tough competition, and I mean that's what I expect. Uh, I will say the Eagles are a surprise. I didn't think they'd be eight and one at this point. I thought some other teams would be better. But, I mean, they lost to the Chiefs. They beat the Giants in a close one, beat the Chargers in a close one. They're doing what they need to do. They had three close games. They won those three close games. The Chiefs is the only one they, if you want to go seven or less, that's the one they lost. So three and one, still great. Uh, they play the Cowboys, which will be interesting. and Everyone wants to see, but that's not this week. That's next week. And, of course, they play the Bears, which, you know, will be interesting, but not getting my hopes up for. But, hey, the Bears are a new team. They're coming off their bye week. And, of course, I'm going to talk about the Bears because they're my team. So my not-so-surprising 3-5 and five team, uh, Bears are a team I thought would be 6-10 and 10 by the end of the year, which, yeah. They did go to Mitchell Trubisky really early. Uh, lost to the Falcons by a touchdown. Blowout loss to the Buccaneers because of a bad game by Mike Lennon. Beat the Steelers by t six points. Another bad game by Mike Lennon against the Packers. First game for Trubisky. Lost to the Vikings by three. Beat the Ravens by three. Beat the Panthers 17-3. And the loss the I just don't understand still the 20 to 12 against the Saints. For the first time in nine years, according to stats, the Bears are favored to win this coming weekend against the Packers, and I don't doubt it. Now, I'm reflecting on the Saints game for the Bears because Trubisky wasn't as accurate as he should have been. Howard did what he needed to do. Cohen did what he needed to do. 
And looking at it, the Bears did nothing wrong. <laughs> they really didn't. And that's the sad thing. When you do everything right and you still lose. And that's the thing with this Bears team. This Bears team isn't going to wow you with their offense. They're a traditional Bears team in the sense of defense is first, offense is second. Mitchell's there to control the game this year. Once we start getting more weapons, I expect him to start lighting it up. But this year, I expected to manage the game. What's sad, the Lions and the Packers are right there in striking distance. A win over the Packers at least doesn't put them last in the division. And quite frankly, they're a team to see what happens in the coming weeks. I think that it'll be interesting. It's also interesting to see how the Lions do. Looking at just the standings alone, the Lions are 1-3 and three at home. Um, that's not how you win games, but hey. Whatever it takes. Uh, the Vikings right now have a nice two-game lead. And quite frankly, I think, looking at this, it's either going to be Vikings or the Lions. And it's with Teddy Bridgewater ready to play. It's going to be interesting because I think Bridgewater is going to come in, not this game, maybe a game or two down the line. And we'll see what happens. Um... Anything else I want to talk about specifically? Uh, I'm probably going to cut this one a lot shorter than I have been. Uh, it's just I'm already doing long nights. I don't want to keep doing long nights. I really wanted to rush through some of these topics just so I, once again, have something out there. I know it's been two weeks. I expect it to become consistent again. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Once again, this is your host, Byron, and I'll see you next time. You me up, you me up, believer.